One technique you can use to make a web design look more modern and cleaner is to use a sticky header or an overlay header. But if you've ever used a header of this style before, you probably know that they come with a lot of complication and hassle. Well, Automatic CSS has a brand new feature that is going to completely fix that hassle for you. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in today's tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. What you're looking at is a basic homepage layout. We've whipped this together in a few seconds with frames. And you're gonna see that this design uses a traditional boxed header. And so what this header does is it pushes your page content below it. So you have your header, and then you have your hero section, and then you have your next section. Now, this is how websites have always been, but a much more modern approach, and that's what some people feel is a cleaner approach, is to use a overlay or sticky header. And so I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like right now. So in the header template, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this little switch that says sticky header. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. We'll refresh the front end and we'll see exactly what that does. Now, I have a 10% opacity light color on my header. So it's still creating a little bit of a boxed effect, but you notice that it is now floating over my hero section. So now instead of pushing page content down, it's actually allowing page content to be at the top of the, of the uh, viewport. And then the header is just laying on top of it. Now, what is the hassle that this brings? Well, if you look at our uh, spacing here, actually, I wanna do this instead. So I'm gonna measure from where our header ends to the top of our content. And you're gonna see it's about 100 pixels or so. Now, if we measure from the bottom of our content to the bottom of our container, you're gonna see that it's about 200 pixels. That is a huge difference. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is that when I turn off the sticky header, we're gonna save, we're gonna take a look at what we had before. So when it was a traditional header, we're actually gonna see that this measures out to 200 pixels, right at the top of our content there. And then down here, we're gonna have exactly the same. So this is going to match exactly and that is perfect balance in your spacing in your section, which is usually what you are trying to achieve because a really good balance is visually pleasing. The minute we turn on a sticky header or an overlay header, we are going to have unbalanced spacing in the first section on our page. Now, can this be fixed? For sure, you could go section by section, basically every hero section on your website, you could manually add additional padding. And this is what many people do. You could also create a class for your hero sections or, your, or for your initial page content that adds extra spacing. But of course that uh, requires you to add that class to every single page, that first element on every single page. Automatic CSS has a brand new feature where you flip a switch and all of this hassle is gone and you don't have to think about it ever again. So that's exactly what we're gonna take a look at now. So I'm gonna go back into the automatic CSS dashboard and I'm gonna go to the additional styling tab. Under the additional styling tab, I want you to see this section called header styling and we have fields for your header height. So we're gonna talk about these in just a second. But the main feature that I'm gonna show you in this uh, video is offset page content automatically. This is only for websites that use an overlay header or a sticky header. Okay, so we're gonna flip this on. Now I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna go to the front end and we are gonna refresh. And what you're gonna notice is that nothing happens. Nothing is different. Why is nothing different? Because automatic CSS doesn't know what the offset value is supposed to be. Right now, the offset value is zero. It's doing an offset. It's just doing an offset of zero. We have to tell Automatic CSS how high our header is, how tall is our header. So we're gonna go ahead and inspect this. All you have to do is inspect your header. You can see it right here in the inspector. So whatever your header tag is, just go ahead and click on that. And then over on the computed tab over here, if you scroll down, it's gonna give you the height. I'm gonna just scroll this all the way up so that we can make sure that we can see this. And actually, I'm going to put this on the side just so we can make sure I'm not covering up anything. So again, you're going to right click on your header 
and then make sure you choose the header element. And then down, down here, make sure you're not in the styles tab, you're in the computed tab. There's other ways to calculate the height, but this is the standard way, okay? You go to the computed tab and just look for the height value. And it's gonna tell you that this header computes to 110 pixels on desktop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that value and I'm gonna insert it right here. So I'm gonna say header height is 110. Now, if I want this to apply at every breakpoint, then I wanna make sure that I tell Automatic CSS the height of my header at each of these breakpoints. All you have to do is set this up once per website. And by the way, this is way better than going page by page by page by page by page, trying to fix your header height issue. And then remember, if you're fixing that header height issue at the ID level, every time your header changes, you're gonna have to go through every section again. It's all gonna be wrong at that point. So this is a very, very efficient way to tackle this. Now, let me demonstrate exactly what we're gonna do because everybody's breakpoints are different. I don't know your breakpoints because you may have changed them. These breakpoints are editable. So what you need to do is go in and see what your breakpoints are in bricks. So I see that this breakpoint is 991. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put in 991 and I'm gonna see the 991 version of my website. And then I'm just gonna look down here again and get the new height value. I still have my header selected. So it's 105.68. So I'm gonna come over here and say 105.68. And then I'm gonna get the M value. The M value is 767. So I'm gonna put that in. And then I'm going to look at my header here. And that is 103.12. Uh, so I'm gonna get that in this box, 103.12. And then I need the S version, which is at 478. So I'm gonna come down to 478. I'm gonna get the height here is 99.81. I'm gonna put this in. And by the way, this is going to give you more than just this offset page content automatically feature. I'm gonna show you a, a couple bonus things here as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and save changes. Now, automatic CSS knows the height of my header. So now it can give a proper offset. I'm gonna refresh this page and you're gonna see that now the spacing is back to being perfectly even. And that is automatic on every page going forward. I don't ever have to worry about this problem ever again. I don't have to remember to add a class to every hero section. I don't have to fix every hero section manually. This problem is simply solved. Now, I'm gonna click on this link right here and you're gonna see that this scrolls down to this section right here. This is called an anchor link. Well, guess what? Overlay and sticky headers, really sticky headers, not overlay headers, but sticky headers have another complication. When you're using anchor links, they tend to cover up the thing that you are linking to because the browser doesn't know that there's a sticky header to compensate for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into our dashboard and I'm gonna remove these values. I'm just gonna reset them back to zero because you saw when we had these values put in that our scroll to anchor link worked perfectly. Our header was not interfering with our content in any way. But now what I'm gonna do is I am going to refresh our page. Now you see our offset is gone. But when I click on this scroll to hash link, look how my header is inside. It's almost touching the content that I was trying to scroll to. Back when we had our header heights in, our header actually ended right there and gave us a full clean view of the section that we had scrolled the visitor to. But without those header heights in, what would happen on a normal website that has a sticky header is something like this, where your header is gonna be covering up some of the content that you were trying to link people to. This is gonna be another issue with sticky elements on your website. Anytime you make an element sticky, if you put the top as zero, the header is going to cover up your part of, part of your sticky element. It's really annoying, like I said. Overlay headers, sticky headers cause a lot of hassles and complication when it comes to modern web design. Automatic CSS fixes all of these things. So I'm just gonna go back and show you one more time. I don't remember what the exact value was. It was something like 105. And then I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And now when I click this button to scroll to the hash, you see the header is way up here. It's no longer trying to cover up part of the content that I was sending the visitor to. And if I was using sticky elements, the same exact thing would happen. Automatic CSS would automatically protect my sticky element 
from coll colliding with my header element. So this is a fantastic thing. I highly recommend you set this up on every website. As soon as you're done building your header, go ahead and get the calculated heights at each breakpoint, plug them in here. If you're using a sticky header or an overlay header, toggle this new feature on offset page content automatically. That's gonna take care of your first section of content, keeping all of your spacing in balance. And then you're also going to get the benefit, as soon as you put in these header heights, you're gonna get the benefit of sticky elements not colliding with your header and anchor links not colliding with your header. I hope you guys are finding a lot of value in this. If you are, drop a comment below, make sure you like this video and stay tuned for more amazing automatic CSS features.